let's get hands on with Power Apps Plan Designer. So if you didn't see the announcement previously, Power Apps Plan Designer is this idea of you're gonna have an architect. So if right now, like today, we can use Copilot to build just kind of a simple table and app, kind of a straightforward solution, and that's grown and gotten better, but it doesn't kind of go with context, right? It's like, just, hey, here's your answer. So what Plan Designer is going to let us do is it's going to let us go and say, hey, here's my business requirements. It's going to help us flush out the user roles. So the different roles and what they need to do, right? The personas, if you will. And then from there, we're going to then say, okay, now help me make the tables to support all the things that those user roles have. And then finally, once we get done with that, then we're going to say, okay, what type of apps, flows, solutions should I build? And it's going to lay those out for us as well. So think about more of an architect instead of just a, Here's the answer to your specific question. And we're going to see that we can iterate with it. We can make changes. We can work through it. And you can do it with, you know, like their demos have been really polished and professional. You know my demo is not going to be. So we're just going to kind of ramble at it and see what it does. And the reason I want to point this out, like while it's still in preview, uh, as part of Ignite today, they said, hey, in the coming weeks, we're going to start making this more of a widely available so people can start to work with it and really get some testing going. So I want to make sure you guys are prepared. All right, as enough of the blah, 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 let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here what you can see, right, I'm at make.powerapps.com and I've got the new experience here. Remember, I'm in a private preview. I have this today. You probably don't have this yet, but you're going to get it real soon. So that's why I'll get you excited about how this works and show you hands on, right? And so up here at the top, you know, the first time I used it, I went through and I just used one of their built-in ones. Not that these built-in ones have any extra plumbing behind them. These are just scenarios. If you're having a hard time, like what should I try for my first app? You can use any of these and go through the same process. Like the first time I did it, you can see down here, vacation day manager. I just clicked on this prompt. So that way I didn't have to think about it. Now, instead what I want to do today is I want to do something that's very Shane and I just want to ramble at it. So what I'm going to do is, you know, a uh, buddy when he is, you know, needs to get a little smarter, we send him off to what we call school, which is really just doggy daycare. And so he'll go there. And so sometimes we use doggy daycare to spend the day there. So if we're going to be traveling all day for soccer and other times we use doggy daycare when we're going to be out of town and buddy can't go with us. And so he might stay there overnight over a few multiple days. So I've always thought about building an app or apps to help them. And so let's see if uh, plan designer here can help me architect that out. So let's put in a prompt. Now I did not make you sit there and listen to me type it. So let's go with it, right? I'll read it to you. So I own a doggy daycare where we offer both day visits while you are at work and overnight stays when you're going to travel and cannot take the pup. Please help me develop a system for managing the dogs coming and going. I need the ability to track dogs, information like name, owner, and vaccine history. For owners, I need name, phone number, address, email. I also allow owners to pre-purchase day passes in quantities of 10, so I need a way to track those. And finally, I need to know what dogs are currently staying with us and when their departure is. This should account for both dogs who are just here for the day and dogs will be staying one or more nights with us. So that was it. I didn't refine that. I just rambled in there and typed in the keyboard because that's the way I think, right? Now, I want to point out here that you can even attach files. Maybe you have a proper architect document, right? Maybe you've thought about all this stuff. You've got everything defined and roles and flows. Great. Maybe you have a picture of the napkin drawing you did of what these apps should look like. Like not from like a design, but like the process flow. Like you're going to see when we kind of get to the end, like it's not all about making your apps awesome and cool on the insides. It's about getting the structure and the right apps in places. You're still going to have to do your own design work. So don't think about drawing your design work, but think about like, you know, the data flows and things like that. That's what you'd put in there. So you can attach all those. We're not going to do any of that for right now because we literally just rambled out this stuff. So now we're going to say go. Now it drops you into this interface and right because it's thinking, right? It's feeding it into a large language model. It's saying, hey, what do I know about doggy daycares? And so, okay, I understand the context of doggy daycares. And then now it's saying, okay, based on what I know about that and then what Shane gave us, it starts to spit out user roles. So it went faster than I thought it would. And so the user roles here, you can see that it figured out. And I mean, I, I, you can say I helped it, but I just was trying to explain the situation. But it said, hey, here's the user roles. And so for dog owners, right, it tells you about them. And as a dog owner, I need to register my dog. Yep. Update my dog's history. Yep. Purchase day passes and quantities of 10. So, okay, cool. Uh, view my dog's current stay status. So I know if they're checked in or checked out. Update my contact info so they, the doggy daycare can reach me. And view my dog's stay history so I can track part of a visit or past visits. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, I realize here that I didn't give it all the information. So, for example, as a dog owner, I can either buy that 10-day pass or I can just pay ad hoc. So I want to add that in there so that that's captured. So we'll go down here to the bottom and we're going to say change. Now you go to change, right? You can either change 
you know, whichever section you're on, and we haven't even looked at daycare staff, so obviously we're gonna change the dog owner. So we'll just go back here up here and we'll add something like, as a dog owner, I don't have to pre-purchase day passes. I can buy ad hoc upon arrival. Also, I don't have to make reservations for day visits, only for overnight visits, right? Because it didn't really capture any of the reservation stuff. We're gonna feed it in these additional things. And so remember, like these additional things, they can be things that I forgot, or they can be things where it misrepresented or it, it didn't quite get your point, right? Like, so we can use it here though, but we're just gonna tune the dog owner and we could go back and forth and make as many changes there as we needed. Because what we want ultimately here is the user role to be correct, A, so we have it, you know, so we know our history, our documentation of that, but B, we also want to make sure that like, you know, it's, we want it to build the right stuff for us, the tables and apps later, so it's got to have the right history. And so here you can see it, add purchase day passes, boom, and make reservations. All right, those are good. And once again, we're not super concerned here. Like we're just trying to get through the mechanics. Like we're not really going to turn this over. Um, maybe I should, I don't know. I wonder how poor Paul's would think about that. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we'll say keep. Fun side note there, I actually ran into one of my YouTube viewers at Buddy's Doggy Daycare one time. He didn't recognize me like when he looked at me, but when I started talking to the desk staff, he's like, are you Shane Young? I was like, I am. Like, how crazy is that? It's literally at the Doggy Daycare, so I knew who I was. The world's weird. There you go, there's the dog owner. Now for the daycare staff, we have some similar information as well. I'm not gonna read all those for you, uh, but if we kind of look at those, one of the things that I think is missing here is I want to remind people of their upcoming reservations, right? So we're going to say change again. This time we'll click on daycare staff. Please automatically notify owners the day before their overnight reservation, right? And so we'll hit go. As you can imagine, it's going to add this in here. The real reason I'm adding that one is because I want it to also recommend a flow. And I think that what I had before what might not have done a flow. So, you know, sometimes I throw it pieces all right, in your requirements to get it to show you the whole breadth because we're really here to learn. We're not trying to build it right now, right? Interesting enough, I did not plan this. This is, I'm learning sometimes too here. Um, notice that it did not change the daycare staff. So I'm like, well, why? But look, it actually realized that that was part of the user's role. So I kind of thought of it as a staff role to notify them, but it's really saying the role goes to the user. So it put it up here. Well, you know, it's good. It did what I want. It did what it needed to do, right? And this is the beauty, I think, of this AI coming in, this intelligence. I just kind of said, hey, here's what I need. And it's kind of helping me get it into the right buckets, right? So we'll say keep. And so at this point, we're like, all right, the user roles look good. So now we're going to accept. So when we accept the user roles, now what it's going to start to work on is it's going to identify the tables that it needs to build our solution. So, you know, it's got to store the things. It's going to create the relationships. So we're gonna give it here, yeah, I'm guessing 15 to 30 seconds to do it. So I'll be right back. All right, I got distracted. I forgot how long it was, but it was it was at 15 to 30 seconds. But so here you can see it's like, hey, I'm gonna to have to have a dog table, a dog owner table, a day pass, and a stay table. And so if you click on these, nothing happens right now. But if we go over here, let's pull this thing up, and you hit show details, this is going to take you to that design interface. There's the interface. And so here you can see, you know, we've got the dog, we've got some one-to-many relationships here. We've got a lot of different pieces going on here. But if we want to drill in and check out one of these, so let's click on dog, for example, and hit view data. We're going to see we get sample data in here. Um, we got names, we've got breeds, and we've got age and vaccine history. Kind of interesting. But so looking at this though, you know, one of the things I realized is I have vaccine history. So yes, you know, this first uh, buddy, that's hilarious they picked buddy because that's buddy's name. Um, but so uh, they marked it as vaccinated here, but we didn't do a vaccination date. Okay, so we need to change that. And we're not gonna go through all these tables, right? You get the idea that it made a bunch of tables for us and it set up the relationships like it should. So what we're gonna do though is we're gonna go back over here. So we'll hit back and we'll go down here and we're gonna say change again. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, please add a vaccine expiration date for the dog. It took me three takes to say that. Oh, anyway, we're gonna press go. And so now it's gonna think, it's gonna rework all the data and it should pretty quickly spit us back out the tables again. All right, so then we'll say show details. I mean, I don't think we can't click here, right? So we gotta click here to show details. And then we're back in here. And now if we say view data, there is our vaccine expiration date. Awesome. That looks good. That's what we want. Uh, you know, probably a little bit more effort than having the co-pilot pop over here. So we could have just added it on the fly like we do on the other UI, but this is all a work in progress. I have faith that it'll get easier and faster to work with as they get more and more reps in, right? But there you go. So we're happy with our data story. So now that we are, we're going to say save tables. Hey, are you watching this and go, man, I'm pretty far behind. I probably should know more of this co-pilot stuff. 
Well, good news, right? I've got a Copilot AI training class on demand, and we've also got a Copilot Jumpstart class coming live in January where you can sign up for a whole day of learning about all the different AI coolness, you know, for M365, a little bit of ChatGPT, and then some of this Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot, Copilot Studio, all of the fun things that you need to know so you can jump forward, so you can be the one taking advantage of AI. All right, back to the video. And now what it's going to do is it's going to figure out what apps and flows we need available to make all this work. So that is what it's going to do for the moment. All right, so it took about two minutes um, to spin all that up, but that's okay. I, it usually doesn't take that long, so I don't know. You know, it's still in preview, it's okay. But so now you can see, we'll just use over here on the left, or this is the right, <laughs> whatever size screen this is. Uh, so it built us a dog owner management canvas app, or it, it built, you know, kind of defined that I should say. It defined a daycare staff management, a model-driven app for that. So we have a Canvas app and model-driven app both being defined. Um, it said, hey, for the reservation reminder, I want to do a Power Automate flow. And then for the vaccine update notification, another one. Which is cool, because I hadn't even thought about the update notification. Good job. All right? And I think that's one of the great things, right? Remember the whole Copilot idea. Like, it's helping me think of things I didn't even really think of. But so now if we're like, all right, cool, I want to check this out. So if we click on, let's start with the Canvas app here. First, we got to accept it. So let's accept its ideas, right? So now you're good. So then now what it's going to do is, there we go. So you see how there's now a plus beside all of these? So now if we click on the plus, it will open us up a new uh, window. And look at that. It builds us a whole app. So we've got, you know, different sections for or different screens for each of the different scenarios. And so, for example, if we just hit the Alt key so we can jump over to the dog screen, then we get the standard one. Now, these apps aren't super elaborate, right? Like, calm down. The, one day they probably will be, but today, like, it's your standard, you know, that templated app that Microsoft's been using for a lot of things. You know, we got the gallery on the left, the form on the right, and each one of these is just connected to those different tables that got defined, right? The data tables also all got pulled in, and of course, they got created behind the scenes, right? So that's your Canvas app. If we go back over here, so if we push the plus here, this will do a model-driven app for us. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and click, click that and let it start going in the background. Now, on the flows, while we're waiting on the model-driven app to generate, today it doesn't build the flows for you. All it's going to do is take you to the interface to build the flows for us. So you would need to make one for reservation reminder and vaccine update notifications, right? There's no mechanics for building those. I'm certain that is something that is going to show up eventually. Uh, but right now, it does not actually build the flows. It just tells you what flows you need, right? If we hit the plus on the flow, right, it's basically dropping us in here into the solutions place so that we can then create one inside of a solution and kind of go and do our thing, okay? So, like, you know, don't get hung up there. Like, it, it's still pretty cool. It, it understood what flows I needed. Now, I just need to sit down and build it. And really, I could use the different co-pilots within Power Automate to then say, hey, I need a flow that does this thing and, you know, start to use it to do that with words as well. Or maybe, hopefully, just kind of know how to build that flow on your own. Either way, all right, so that's finished loading. And if we jump back over here, um, all right, and so then there's the model-driven app that they built us for um, the daycare staff management. Same type of thing, right? It just has the different screens, the different options available to, to manage it. And so now, right, we're good. We could take, we could either customize the model-driven app, the Canvas app, or we could just publish them, share them, start using them. Like, the thing is done. It's pretty awesome. If we jump back over here, at this point, we're all done. Now, notice up here on the right, there's a save icon. I'm pretty sure it's been auto-saving for me the whole time, but we'll hit the save icon just to feel good that we know that it's saved. And then now we'll just hit the old back here. And so here you can see, look, there is my previous plan. There's that vacation day manager one that I did a week ago, right? And at any point, you can jump back into any of these. Let's go look at the one I built a week ago, right? And so there it kind of sits out, you know, with all of its pieces, right? Like this one also had flows, model-driven Canvas apps. Um, you know, one of my other tests, it didn't have any flows, so it didn't show up in there. But you can see, you know, all of my information, right? So here's the roles that we worked out. Here's the managers, all the stuff. And we could iterate on this. So we could come back up here and be like, oh, yeah, now I know I need to do X or Y. So really powerful stuff. Um, and, you know, the other thing about this feature, I can, if you're like, I can do all that myself. I don't need that. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's fair, right? But it shows you where the world is going. It shows you the direction, right? Like, and so using this today to A, you know, it had ideas about my doggy daycare I didn't think about. Very helpful. But also, like, you just start to think about how does this evolve? Well, you know what? Well, they're probably going to start making the flows for you. Oh, 
I don't like the way that those all of those apps kind of have that same little thing. I bet at some point I'll be able to say, make my app real pretty, and it'll make my app pretty. Like I mean, they haven't said these things. These are just conjecture. These are my ideas. But this is the evolution. I mean, think back, you know, what was it, a year ago when we just had the little copilot at the top prompt and all it really did was made a simple table and a simple app, right? Like boring. But then all of a sudden they said, hey, now that same interface can build multiple uh, tables and do the relationships and multi-screen apps. Yeah, right, improvement. And then now all of a sudden, now that same tooling is being used to take my rambling and be an enterprise architect and help me define roles and tables and process and the whole big shebang. Right? Like, they've made a lot of progress and they will continue to make progress. So don't sleep on this feature. You know, be learning about it, using it, so you're comfortable with it as it evolves and it becomes something amazing and spectacular. I mean, it's pretty amazing today, right? But when it becomes like something that you're, you know, all of a sudden just saying, you know, make me a pretty app with these components and these pieces and blah, 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 and go, like you're ready for that because you've went on the journey. Questions, comments, leave them below. If you enjoy this style of learning, please, get, you know, subscribe, right? Like join up. Uh, I always do make these videos. I make, you know, one or two videos a week, every week. I've got over 500 at this point. Oh my goodness, so much. Uh, and of course, I have proper training classes. So I have a great co-pilot jumpstart class. Or, you know, we've got consulting service, mentoring services, whatever I can do to help you, you just let us know over at powerapps91.com. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.